Um, thank you for coming down this morning. Uh, I think there are quite a number of people signed up and there are probably not enough seats, so um, you just have to stand around or take a seat here near the front. Uh, so today we'll be talking about uh, the WAN automation engine and uh, some of our APIs. Just curious how many of you uh, know of the WAN automation engine or are using our product right now? Okay, not many. So basically, um, just a brief uh, background, WAN automation engine is uh, formerly uh, from Keridan. It was an acquisition by Cisco in December 2012. Uh, what we do uh, or where we play is in the service provider space and we do basically... Um, sorry. Okay. okay. Sorry. So what we do is basically um, traffic engineering and uh, planning. So simulation uh, in terms of offline planning. And after the acquisition, what Cisco did was we, we did a lot of re-architecture of the product and we moved it into a more online um, planning, online automation uh, kind of uh, platform. So, um, my name is uh, Derek Tay. I'm a technical marketing, en marketing engineer. I'm joined here by Josh. Uh, both of us work out of uh, San Jose. Um, today we'll talk about basically three things. We'll give you a quick overview of our product. Um, and then we'll go into the actual uh, using the Way APIs. And uh, if some of you have your laptops up later on, we actually have an exercise where you can try using your laptops to make calls against our server and see the, see the output as well. So very quickly, some uh, marketing slides. Um, so key tenets of SP transformation we see today, I think the main things are about around simplification. Simplification and automation, right? So being able to um, do more things with your current product and basically applying those to um, your infrastructure, be it physical or, or virtualized, right? And the whole idea is to increase the agility, right? So agility to turn up new, new use cases, uh, to turn up new services for your customer, as well as agility to be able to troubleshoot. So operationally be able to fix problems in your, in your network faster. And the whole approach of Cisco is around this idea of open network architecture. The main, the main um, takeaway from this slide is that we want to abstract all the layers. So essentially at the bottom you have your, your infrastructure, be it physical or virtual. In the middle you have this idea of network abstraction. So taking the information, whether it's a multi-vendor network, whether it's a multi-layer, so optical or, or even IP, and make it into, in, into a model that you can manipulate or you can use to to help you in this uh, journey of, of agility transformation, right? And of course, at the, end, at the top there, you have the services and applications. So in the, in the middle layer where you do this network extraction is to expose all the capabilities with APIs. So third parties or, or DevOps could basically essentially write applications or write scripts to call these APIs and to execute um, steps or processes within your workflow. So essentially, where provides that network extraction layer. So it plays in the middle layer of the diagram earlier. So essentially what we have right now is at the, at the infrastructure level, we have the protocols. So be it the traditional SNMP CLI or the newer stuff like BGPLS, PSAP, even telemetry. By interfacing with those protocols, we are able to gather information about the network. And there are two main ways that we interact with the network today. Uh, one is XTC. So XTC is our interface using um, PSAP and BGPLS, right? Previously, in the earlier version of our product, we use OSC. So OSC is basically Cisco's version of ODL. So it's hardened version of ODL. And it, it gave us an interface using BGPLS and PC, PSAP. In the newer version of, of Way, we are looking at using XTC, which is the uh, XR transport controller. This is a new, um, new capability that's enabled in XR that also does this BGPLS and, and PCE capability. Also, the, the, another way that we do interface to the network is using the nets available from NSO. So NSO came from our tail left acquisition. So the nets are basically a device interface that we use to talk to the network. And it allows you to abstract the CLI or the NetConfYoung interface into multi-vendor products. So where we place is basically in that middle layer there, using either XTC or NSO to interface to the network. So we don't actually talk directly to the network. We use controllers like XTC or NSO 
the nets to actually interface to the network, right? And right above that, we have, uh, we have the service orchestration layer. Here we show NSO as that. It could be any third party that has an API interface down into a way that could also do that. In terms of the actual WAN automation engine, what we have in our product is a collector. So our collector interface basically uses the XTC and the NSO interface to bring in information about the network, the topology, the utilization, um, any, any type of SNMP statistics. And with that, what we do is we build a network model. So an uh, abstracted representation of your network in terms of both the topology as well as the flow of demands or flow of traffic in your network. Right? And using that network model, we run our optimization and prediction uh, algorithms against it. So we could simulate, for example, failures in your network. So what if I fail this link in your network? How would that impact my topology? How will that impact my traffic? Right? I can also do capacity planning. So if I increase a particular traffic between point A and point B, how will that impact my, traf uh, how will that impact my network model in the future in terms of the traffic flow? Right? So based on those types of uh, simulations or optimizations, you may decide to do traffic engineered LSPs, you know, create an RSVPT LSP, or even create a SRT policy between point A and point B. And once you have done that, and you have moved the traffic accordingly in the simulated model, you can then deploy it. You can actually push those configurations down back to the network using the two interfaces that we have, XTC and NSO. Right? So, Again, based on that optimization and prediction level, we expose those capabilities through an API. So any third party application sitting on top can interface into our product using those APIs. One of the applications we have is our product itself, the way design, which basically is a thick client that sits on your laptop, be it a Mac or a, a Linux or Windows. And you, we actually essentially exercise those APIs from the thick client down to way to make those simulation and optimization uh, queries. Any questions so far? No? OK. I'll hand now over to my colleague, Josh, who will take you through some of the use cases that our product does. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Derek. Um, so we have some slides on like our typical use cases that uh, our planning tool addresses. Uh, but I figure rather than show slides, we can actually do some demonstration here today of these capabilities as well. Um, so let me just jump out of this and into our uh, planning tool. So uh, this tool that I'm showing here is called Way Design. And what we're looking at here is the layer 3 topology of the network. And uh, so when I zoom in, does it? Uh, good, so it comes across on the screen as well. So um, these square boxes that we see are sites. And inside each site are a number of nodes. So in this case, in every site, I have one edge router and two core routers in this topology. And the colors on the links that we see represent the amount of traffic utilization on them. Um, so when you see anything become purple in, in the demonstration, it means it's congested. And this view that we're currently looking at is a schematic view of the network. Uh, I can also look at uh, other views, like a geographic view of my uh, sites and locations and all that as well. And the last part that I'm just going to talk about on, in terms of visualization here is uh, just the ability to uh, take something from this topology. Like if I want to drill down to more information on this interface, I can drill down to it here. And I, I see I've selected this interface in the property table below. So it's a way of navigating your network uh, in this uh, design and planning tool. Uh, so what can we do with the uh, design and planning tool? Well, we go out to the network, and we collect measurements from the network. We collect the traffic and topology, uh, LSP paths if they're configured, and we correlate all of that into this model. And from that information, from that measured information, we derive a traffic simulation. And so, for example, I'm looking at my, my simulated traffic right now, and I can see if a link were to fail on this side of my network, where does the traffic go, and what's the impact to my network? So as I mentioned before, when something becomes purple, it means it's congested on this side of the network. And I can, I can simulate that. Um, 
so that was an example of a, of a circuit failure. I can also look at things like node failures or site failures. And I can go through and, and look at each failure one by one, or I can have tools that automate these processes for me. Uh, one example of this is a tool called simulation analysis that will go through and fail each link by one by one. In this case, uh, the, the circuits fail each circuit one by one and record like the high water mark. And what you get after doing this is the worst case traffic view. So it means, for example, this link became purple as a result of some failure somewhere in the network. And if I want to find out what failure caused, would cause this uh, to become purple, I can uh, filter to the worst case view of this. So in this case, if this link fails, then the traffic shifts in my network, and uh, that's the impact to that. So that's the simulation aspect of Way. In addition to that, we also have optimization algorithms as well. And I believe that's what's covered uh, um, in the fourth slide here. So for example, in this case, uh, uh, a use case of capacity-based optimization. So is there familiarity with segment routing uh, here? Have you guys heard of segment routing at all? So uh, yes, segment routing is a way of, um, of doing traffic engineering on your network by specifying uh, just the, the list of hops that you want the LSP to take through your network. Uh, and Way has a bunch of optimization algorithms around segment routing and RSVP TE. Um, but one example of that is let's say that, uh, let's say that I'm onboarding a new customer, and so I'm going to create a new demand. And I'm onboarding this customer from uh, London. Uh, let me pick a different site. One second. Uh, let's say I'm, I'm onboarding a new customer from my Istanbul site. And I am going to go to uh, TXL. And let's say that this customer uh, is going to add a gig and a half of traffic to my network. I can simulate the impact of that. And I see that I have congestion here. And I can ask Way to maybe come up with any optimization algorithms that involve segment routing. So add the minimum number of, of segment routing tunnels I need to get below a utilization threshold. So in this case, I don't want any of my interfaces to be purple or exceed 100%. So I'm going to use Ask Way to optimize this for me. And so the result is that I've actually added an LSP to my network, just one LSP to get below 100% utilization. And in this case, this is the, the LSP I'm taking. And in terms of segments that I need to define on this LSP, there's only three hops. So uh, go to uh, FCO, then TXL, and then go to uh, CHP. So that's, uh, that's what Way really does, the simulation and optimization aspects of that. And one last uh, um, kind of planning use case uh, that I'll show is uh, around multi-layer. So uh, if you're like a service provider and you also own your own layer one infrastructure underneath your layer three, uh, we can view that in the design tool. Uh, so in this case, I'm looking at a geographic view and I see my, my layer one topology actually underneath my layer three topology. And one of the things I can do is I can uh, select a link at layer one. Let me go back to another view. So if, if I have a fiber cut at layer one, what's the impact to my layer three topology? And in this case, in this particular example, if I have a fiber cut at layer one, it takes down three layer three circuits and I have massive congestion on, on the lower half of my network. So those are, those are all the use cases around uh, planning uh, that, that this tool really uh, focuses on. Are there any questions on this tool before I, yeah. Ah, so, so correlate the layer one infrastructure with the demands? Is that the question? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, at layer three or layer one? Yeah. So uh, what we do for, for layer three is we uh, do a process called demand deduction. Uh, so we basically take the measurements from the network. Uh, so in this case, I have, I can look at my traffic measurements on the network, and I've collected SNMP stats on all of these interfaces, and uh, I, I also define a mesh of demands for this network. So in this case, my mesh of demands uh, is just basically edge router to edge router, and we have an algorithm called demand deduction that will take the measurements and this demand mesh and, uh, and come up with the, what the demand is end to end. In addition to that, we can also import NetFlow data. So if, if there's NetFlow all at the edge, of the edge of the network, we can import that as well and use that in, as the demands as well. Oh, we collect, we collect the SNMP ourselves, yeah. And we have our, our NetFlow collector is, uh, is actually open source. It's called PMACCT. Um, uh, but we've also developed a, um, kind of a, a layer on top of that open source code to have it better interact with our product as well. Are there other questions around this? Okay. All right, so uh, let's talk about the APIs now. So, oh, the strategic initiatives first. So as I already showed you in the, in the previous section, what we do, do with the design and planning tool, these are the, our big areas of focus. Um, the first in the top left is around automation and exposing APIs that allow applications to use the information that we have in our model. Uh, another big focus for us is segment routing, all those uh, optimization algorithms that we have. Um, I showed you one for capacity optimization, uh, but we also have segment routing optimizations for latency, avoidance, and uh, computing disjoint paths as well. Uh, down at the bottom, uh, as Derek mentioned before, uh, we're working very closely with the NSO team, and in our, our upcoming uh, release, uh, we'll actually be tightly integrated with NSO. And at the bottom right is obviously the multi-layer stuff um, that, I, that I was showing you before. Uh, I should point out that both Way and NSO are both multi-vendor, so uh, you know, we collect from Cisco, Juniper, Huawei, Akatel, Lucent, and uh, NSO is also a multi-vendor tool that has a number of supported device nets as well. So, uh, oh, so quick update on the APIs, because I know that that was the title of the session is around uh, the APIs that we have. And so, basically, when I was clicking around in that design tool, all the operations that we have in the design tool, we also have APIs for as well. Uh, so when I was creating an LSP or, or uh, computing an optimal path, we have APIs that can do that uh, as well. So in this case, uh, I'm clicking uh, the options here on the left, and this is the actual Python code here on the right to do the same thing. So this is what we call the Design RPC API. This documentation is available on the Cisco DevNet uh, site. So now we get into uh, how can I use this API in more of an automated sense. So the, the Way server actually has the latest model of the network, right? And using that API that I was talking about in the last slide, you can actually program, write your services in Way that use that latest model and you can have a bunch of these services that use this latest model uh, to actually uh, handle requests and replies. And we're about to do an example of this as well, where uh, each one of you guys can actually send a request to a Way server that I set up and see the replies that come back as well. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is an example of a uh, workflow where NSO is asking Way for give me disjoint paths uh, between node A and node B. So in a Way service, it's, it's calling a REST API, but in this way service, I'm doing the path computation, and I'm sending that back to NSO. NSO is then pushing that configuration to the devices, and then we verify that it was uh, pushed by collecting from the network. So uh, let's, if we can, try to, try to put these uh, together. So we have a site up. Uh, called waydev.cisco.com. 
So if you go to the site, uh, you can actually play around with our APIs as well. I don't know if, uh, I'll give you a few minutes to actually go there. Uh, but basically on this site is our lab that Derek and I maintain. Um, so when you go to this URL, uh, way-dev.cisco.com, uh, port 8080, You're presented with kind of a login page, and you can just press uh, any number, really, 1 through 26. And you're presented with kind of an overview of the sections in the lab. Uh, the only section that we've enabled right now, though, is this, uh, this section here. So this uh, offline planning automation section. So let me know if I'm going too fast or if you want to follow along on your, on your laptops or not. So basically, this, this whole document describes the APIs that we have available in Way. And as I mentioned before, we have that low-level design RPC API. On top of that, our solution team has developed a more Pythonic wrapper, so you don't have to know the whole relational database that we work with. Uh, you basically write your code in more of a Pythonic way. And below that is the use case I was describing below, where you taking taking that API and that service that you that you're writing in the offline planning tool, and putting that on the way automation server to do these operations in real time on the latest model of the network. So at the bottom here are two API calls um, that you can actually call uh, from. I, I put this on a public. Uh, uh, IP address, so you should be able to call it uh, uh, from your local machine. But this first API call, it's basically just asking for the topology of the network. So in this case, I'm taking uh, just a simple curl command. Uh, are you guys familiar with curl or, or postman? You can do either one. And you can just paste it in your browser. In this case, I'm just asking for, give me all the circuits that I have in the network. And it's going to come back with a big kind of XML kind of blob. I'll just scroll up to the top here. But basically, in this example, it happens to be that, that one I just saw, where uh, I have, this is my circuit here. And so this node is connected to this node, and these are the interfaces that connect them. So that's kind of the way of an interpreting that, a that API call. Are there any questions on, on this section? If anybody would like me to go back, let me know. I can uh, go back and do that again. OK. And so we can take a look at the second API call as well. So let me just go back to this slide for a second. So uh, when we were preparing for this session, I wrote a little path computation service that's sitting on the way server, and I wrote it in this API. So you should be able to call a REST API to do a path computation and send the, re the request back to way. The nodes in the network happen to be, I, I loaded in this, this current network model. Let me get rid of this demand here. I loaded in this network model, so you should be able to ask for path computation between any of these nodes. So I have edge routers and core routers. Right, so this is, this is the list of nodes I have in the network. And basically, all you need to define to get this to work is you just need to define the source and destination in the request. So uh, if you just copy and paste this, you're asking for a path between FCO and TXL. And you could do that, like I said, you could do that here in the design tool as well, or you could do it through the API. 
But let's go ahead and give this one a try. I'm just going to copy it again and paste it. So I'm basically asking, uh, I'm calling the service that I wrote. Uh, it's here at the end, it's called path compute. So between this source node and this destination node. And basically, what I'm given back is in segment routing my list of segments. And I could actually write this path computation to return any information that you want. Um, it just so happened that segment routing was something we we're going to be talking about later on this week. Uh, but if you want the list of interfaces, that could be returned. If you want um, the utilization values of all those interfaces, that could be returned as well. Are there any questions on on the API ecosystem? Because I know it's it's pretty complicated. We have our essentially the API for our design and planning tool, and we took that API and you can exercise it on the server against the latest model of the network. All right. And so if there's uh, the, last, the last thing I'd like to show, actually, is this is the actual path compute service that I wrote. Um, so basically, I defined in Yang, this is the path compute Yang file. And I'm basically, uh, uh, the only things I had to change here was I'm importing the Cisco Way uh, module. But essentially, I'm, remember how I said you're specifying the source and destination in that API call? This is where that comes from in the Yang, the source and destination. And the result, as we saw before, the result is just a string. So in this output, it says output, result, and then the string. And same thing with the Yang on the input. It was input, source, dest. So input, source, dest. So that's, that's all I had to do for the Yang file. In terms of the actual Python code, it's not uh, terribly long. It's probably, this whole file is less than 100 lines of code. Um, but all the meat happens just in this section here. And uh, I'm actually using the low level API, but as I mentioned before, we're working on a nice, a nice wrapper around this to make it more Pythonic as well. So in this, in this case, when you ask uh, to get a path, um, I'm basically adding a new LSP to the model like I would do in the design and planning tool. And then uh, I am optimizing that LSP. And then I'm processing the result and appending it to that segment list. And then I'm basically appending the segments after that. But like I said before, you, could, you can change this code to do basically anything you can do in the design and planning tool. You could return any information from the network. So that was, that was really uh, uh, most of the stuff we had on the API. So again, if, if you guys want to give this a try, please go to uh, waydev.cisco.com, port 8080. And when you go to that URL, you should be able to paste in the API calls as well. So you might be wondering, uh, where's the documentation for this API? Um, if you come by World of Solutions, Derek will show you how, uh, how we can document the APIs automatically um, by, by basically using an NSO um, service to publish our APIs. Mm -hmm. uh, but in addition, we also have our uh, documentation available on developer.cisco.com, site way, and under documentation, uh, it says 6.4. Most of what I was showing today is, seven, is coming in 7.0, uh, but the low-level API is all documented here in the Design RPC API. Way 
So this document describes the ins and outs of using the API and also provides a number of examples. So again, this is the same same type of code that uh, you put in the service, which I happen to close already. But this is the same code that you would put in that service that sits on the server. Uh, are there any other questions on the uh, API uh, use in Way? So anything you can do in the design and planning tool, we have APIs for uh, that you can do in real time. That's that's the main thing I wanted to get across. Yeah. So uh, Derek and I will be in World of Solutions at yeah. the service provider section. Um, we'll be showing demonstrations of XTC and Way and NSO uh, for something called um, ODN. Yeah. I don't know if you want to describe that. Uh, um, so very quickly, um, there is a concept called on-demand next stop using uh, segment routing, which essentially is uh, the idea that you can create a service. For like example, for example, a, a layer 3 VPN? Yeah, like a L3 VPN service. Deploy that uh, using NSO as a service orchestration tool. And as a result of that deployment of just purely the service, it would create the SRT policy. Uh, SRT policy being the, the tunnel between point A and point B. So you create a L3 VPN service between point A and point B. The policy is automatically created uh, as part of that service creation. And the traffic is automatically steered onto the policy that has been created. So that's the concept of uh, XTC and, and SROdn. And we show that whole thing working together with Way, NSO, XTC on a, on a virtual network, essentially. And if anybody will be attending our lab on Wednesday at yeah. uh, 9 a.m., yeah. we're doing an instructor-led lab downstairs. If anybody's attending that, uh, that'll be a big focus of the second half is using XTC, Way, and NSO for on-demand next hop. Yep. Uh, so if there's questions, uh, I mean, Derek and I are, will be around. Yep. Um, and feel free to, uh, to talk to us after as well and let us know if you uh, want us to drill down to anything more specific. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you.